Welcome to Norwegian Modeling Bench. This is Kenneth. And this is the 13th installment on the CV6 build. So in this installment, I am working on the bow flight deck, meaning the structure beneath the flight deck. So this is part of the Pontos kit, and it is uh, comprised of uh, at least three of the frets. So a lot of PE going on here. Uh, so I hope that uh, you would like to, that you like this installment and that you would like to continue following me. So subscribe and like if you would like to. Also, if there are any comments, please provide them. I really like uh, getting feedback. So I hope that uh, you will enjoy. And as you can see, there is a lot of PE going on here. Okay, then it's time to look at the bow flight deck and the structure beneath. So this is uh, what we are aiming for uh, underneath the flight deck. Um, so this is on page 11 and 12. And... Um, there is uh, a lot of big photo etch uh, pieces going in on this one. Uh, Goda structure uh, underneath here, which um, needs a bit of attention to get correct. So aligning the um, the two um, girders to match them up. Um, and then, of course, we have the big piece going on the back side. Uh, otherwise, in the instructions uh, on page 11, this uh, area is wrong. Uh, the parts, the part numbers are wrong. I've been in contact with Pontos and they have now updated this, uh, this page. So you can go to Pontos uh, pontosmodel.com and uh, download the updated um, version, which I will also show a picture of here. So here we go. It's not only B17, but uh, actually other uh, part numbers, which makes things a bit easier when assembling. So uh, I have started with the first part. Um, so this is the kit part, uh, the set one, which I have... Uh, Done some things on before starting, removing all the nubs on the sides, which are going to represent the arresting gear. Uh, those are being replaced with the photo etch from Pontos. And then you also have the single deck on the side, which I've also removed and will be um, replaced with photo etch. Uh, otherwise, I have uh, measured up, putting this, dry fitting this to the hull, seeing how the, the structure beneath uh, fitted with this piece. I uh, made some marks and it looks to be a good fit. So, uh, scoring this one on the back side, then using E6000 and gluing it on. So now it's been um, curing for uh, 24 hours. So now I can get started on this one. So it's good to have a good solid base when starting. So my plan now then is to add the different girders and so on. And um, well, really most of, of the parts I assume at this point in time, um, until I get the finished structure here. Uh, of course, test fitting uh, on the hull during the build so I can discover any uh, misalignments or so on as early as possible. Then I will um, will paint this up. Um, I will uh, add a navy blue color and um, also do 
weathering on these parts because uh, before adding it to the hull because it will be very difficult to do that if I wait until it's actually installed on the hull. So yeah, that's at least the game plan for this part. So let's move on. So the first part of uh, getting the, uh, the structure in place is uh, the girders. And um, it is wise to uh, use a, a diamond file or a file to get uh, all of those tags from the fret uh, away. So you get a good fit uh, afterwards. Then, of course, scoring the backside so you get a good um, grip from the glue. Then I'm uh, using just a regular uh, bending plier to, uh, to get a good uh, bend and, uh, and then applying some uh, CA uh, to the inside. And as you've probably seen from uh, many of my other builds as well, I, I love those reversed uh, tweezers to put some pressure on, uh, on the parts to get the glue to, uh, to set. Then when the, uh, the glue has uh, dried for a bit, I'm also using extra thin CA. So it seeps into the crevices and creates a really good tight bond. Then the work uh, is starting on the girders, the main girders. And uh, I do not glue them in the beginning. Uh, I am dry fitting them kind of, um, just to get the, the alignment in place, uh, adding all of the eight different girders before, <clears throat> before gluing them to, um, to the main piece. Um, I also moved the main part a bit forward, like a mill or so. And that also <clears throat> made it, uh, I had to, um, to do some adjustments to uh, the parts going up against uh, the forward fan tail um, to make the fit uh, perfect. Uh, it's just uh, a bit of cutting like a mill or so from those parts, which of course led to into some other issues uh, on the sides not fitting uh, 100%, but uh, I don't think that it is very visible at least. But uh, the main thing for doing that was to get a good fit towards the structure on the hull. Then you can see I'm starting to glue up the parts. Uh, first uh, using regular um, CA glue and, and then um, a, an extra thin glue. And uh, that's something I usually do all the time. So a combination of regular CA to fit the part into place and then using uh, extra thin CA to, um, to get a good, good grip. And, um, so it's a bit more future-proof, so to say. So I apply that in uh, all the different places that uh, gives a good grip. And here's the end result before starting to add the, uh, the minor or the smaller PE parts. And there is a lot of them, uh, these uh, beams um, you need to, to add between the, the girders and um, doing a good job of filing does, uh, does the job a lot easier in terms of the fit. You don't have a lot of margin on, uh, on these parts. And as you can see, I just dip them in uh, a little bit in CA glue before applying them to the main part. And this is a deviation from the sequence that uh, in, in the um, instructions from Pontos, where they apply uh, top uh, parts of the girders before doing this. And 
that will definitely give you a lot of issues when trying to add these parts. So that's why I have deviated from, from that sequence. And the same thing as before, I'm also then securing the parts with the extra thin CA glue. So then we have uh, those uh, top parts, uh, so you get a good uh, kind of H-beam structure uh, to, uh, to the hull, and you need to be sure that you get the correct uh, um, uh, fit here, and, and watching out for the L and the R right and left part uh, that is also etched into these uh, these girders and um, also these uh, top parts. I guess it has a good name. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what that name is. It gives a really nice uh, look uh, to uh, to the end result, at least. <clears throat> and. Um, Besides from the, the large long ones, you also have these uh, smaller ones that you need to add between uh, the, uh, the different uh, the long ones. So same thing there, I'm just using some regular CA, then applying the part to the top, adjusting. And if you don't like the fit, then do it over again. I do that several times, I'm not showing it that much, but... Uh, Sometimes I do mistakes and that needs correction and it's better to do corrections rather than having a bad end result. And I lost some footage here, or deleted some footage. Um, so applying those sides, uh, it is quite simple, but I would um, recommend having a square edge so you get them uh, perfectly 90 degrees. Otherwise you will definitely get some problems later on when uh, adding the side platforms. And uh, as I showed for the other parts, uh, using a file, getting those small tags from the fret off, so you get a good fit. Then we have the top parts for uh, for those uh, side structures. Uh, same thing using CA, then applying and adjusting the parts before being final. At least if you <laughs> you're happy with the result, that is. Otherwise, just remove it and uh, start all over again. Just remember to remove the, the remains of the CA glue. That then, otherwise it would just pile up and uh, that won't be a good end result. Then I'm annealing the... Uh, gun tub parts, the, the railing for the gun tubs, uh, these didn't have any uh, um, grooves on the back side, so that would make the bending a bit more difficult. Otherwise it's uh, the same thing, I'm just using my um, X-Acto knife uh, handle to, um, to bend it, that has a quite perfect curve for, for this size at least. Then it's the platform itself, 
Um, there are two parts that need to be glued together, a bottom uh, structure and, and that top one. And I'm using reverse tweezers again to get a good fit and then gluing into place. And then there is the gun tubs themselves. Uh, I'm using a um, toothpick here to align the holes from uh, the tub and the platform part. So that's a good tip if you come up to these situations. And then there are uh, some uh, small railing that needs to be bent and glued into place. Then we have the platforms that are going on the sides. There are quite a few bends here and uh, I would definitely recommend using a bending tool to, to get these perfect. Uh, otherwise it will be a, a bit wobbly. Um, so just uh, putting them into the bending tool uh, and uh, adjusting so you get a good uh, match towards where you're going to bend. And this uh, uh, structure that goes under also goes on the side. Uh, there are two parts to this um, that you can see in the instructions. Um, I'm waiting until the platform is installed before I install the last part. Then I'm sure that I will get a good uh, fit uh, towards the rest of, of the structure. And using the same technique uh, with uh, reversed tweezers, so aligning the platform and the underside, and uh, then using um, thin uh, CA glue, extra thin CA glue, to, uh, to glue the two parts together. I find that to be a, a good uh, way of doing it. Applying CA and then trying to match up, that usually ends up uh, things not being aligned properly. So this is at least my way of doing it. And um, you don't get a lot of uh, extra CA glue uh, that you need to remove or that will give you a, a bad result in the end when it's all painted up. And it's time to install the platform and I'm just applying some uh, regular CA glue to the grooves on the back side of the platform and then just lifting it up towards the different um, girders that's sticking out and those should match the underside grooves of the platform. And that's quite uh, easy, just pressing it into place, making sure that the fit is good and then finally securing uh, with uh, some extra thin CA glue, both on uh, these beams and on the back side. You will also see that there is a fit towards um, the, um, the things popping out from the side. Then we have the last part, uh, and sorry for being a bit off camera here, uh, but um, I, as you can see, install that after the platform is in place. Then it's a lot easier to get a good result, I think. Then I'm adding the front platform and uh, if everything has been done correctly, you shouldn't have any issues adding this one. Uh, of course, a bit of uh, uh, an issue in terms of me moving the platform a bit forward. Uh, not the platform, but the underside, uh, the main part, um, which gives a bit of a gap towards the fan tail. But I will um, do some corrections on that when adding the PE part for the fan tail, so it won't be that big of a gap. Then it is uh, the two structures that go underneath the platform, and this is just uh, a regular job in terms of uh, bending uh, sides, the side walls or, or the bulkheads if you like and then gluing it together so 
not a big uh, operation in itself. Um, I'm also on some parts using uh, an accelerator to get um, the CA glue to, uh, to cure faster and um, that makes the job a, a bit easier in, in some cases at least. You can of course uh, do soldering as well uh, but that's not my um, expertise, at least area of expertise, uh, but that definitely uh, would make this uh, maybe a bit easier and sturdier at the end. Then we have um, <clears throat> some parts that are going to be added to this one on the top. Uh, and. Um, it is important to get this uh, perfect uh, 90 degrees, otherwise you will see it very well when it's being installed on the ship. So I'm using this small square edge, as you can see here, to, uh, to get uh, a good 90 degree, then securing it with extra thin CA glue. Then there is another part going in here where you don't have any positive contact. So I'm adding these uh, braces before doing so. So I have something to push towards. Uh, so I get, um, it's a bit, a bit easier at least to in install that part. So as you can see here, I'm just pushing those, uh, that part against those uh, braces that are uh, sticking out on the side. And then of course applying the CA glue to secure and uh, then we have the two uh, other braces that are going on the other side. <clears throat> Sorry about that one. So then it's time to add these and I've just uh, placed them loosely on uh, not gluing them to the um, to the underside uh, because this platform you need a bit of leverage to add that one so I apply glue only after I've added the platform then I'm sure it's it's a good fit otherwise it would be uh, quite a bit of surgery to make this uh, work and it usually is just a couple of uh, points of mills that you you need in terms of getting this in place but um, it worked out well so um, I think that was a, a good uh, way of doing it. And then of course adding plenty of glue to keep it, uh, keep them secure. So both uh, thin CA and then regular CA. And then there are some uh, minor platforms going on in uh, extending the, uh, the, the catwalks on, from that platform on the, on the back side there. Not a big job, but still, you sh I, I would like to show the sequence here. And then there are four pylons that you need to add. Uh, I've not shown how I build these. Uh, it's a similar uh, pylons that pylons or pilers. Uh, that uh, you will find on the stern structure, so I didn't find it necessary to repeat the building of those. Um, just applying a lot of CA on, on this one, so they will uh, be uh, secure. So there are four of these, and then you have uh, two brass parts that go into the little hole in the middle there and I actually had to shorten the one that I just installed a bit because it was a tad too long when uh, test fitting on the hull and then there are two smaller uh, uh, catwalks that are going on the sides uh, there are some small notches uh, underneath the doors that the, this slides into and then just securing them to the flight deck.
So this is the end result. As you can see, a lot of PE, but quite fun, I would say. Uh, a lot of small parts and uh, it's easy to get some uh, misalignments here. So be accurate and patient and uh, you will get a good fit. So uh, when uh, trying this uh, on the hull and I did several times during the build, it the fit was very good. As I said, I only had to adjust the length of the uh, brass 34 part in uh, the back side. Otherwise, it's, it looks very good if you ask me. So I hope that you enjoyed this installment and um, hopefully you will uh, watch uh, next time. So until then, keep safe.